consent decree. Yeah. You talking about a consent decree? Yes. Okay, well, I had nothing to do with consent decree. Mm -mm. Nobody did. It just poofed. Who should I signed off on? You got any proof of that? With Sir, that's not true. And the AG. Sir, that's not true. I was Secretary of State for nine years. I know how the process works. I didn't have anything to do with the yes, uh, consent decree. Yes. And so anybody that says I did, just show the proof of where my name is on that. Okay. Oh, man, that is Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. And he's gotten to a couple of back and forths when he went to a Fulton County Republican Party meeting over the weekend. And he was discussing what he did or didn't or could have or could not have done when it came to the 2020 election. Especially since President Trump keeps talking about how he lost but didn't lose because of how they set things up against him in that state. Now, as he tried to get to some of the details there, as much of a piece of garbage as he is, he was right in these points because now, Trump has got his rabid people asking about the, 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 the consent decree. What is that? Let's look into that. It was an agreement that was struck earlier this year between Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, and a grouping of Democratic organizations to settle a lawsuit by the Democrats against Georgia over generally how signature matching is done. It's about signature matching and has nothing so far from what we've read now to do with Brian Kemp. But it's also at the heart of this lawsuit that Atlanta attorney L. Lynn Wood, we know about him, he's working with Trump, has against Ravensburger in an attempt to stop him from certifying the state's election results. The suit argues that with the agreement, Ravensburger unilaterally and illegally changed Georgia law. Gabriel Sterling, who's the Secretary of State's Voting Systems Implementation Manager, he laughed at that argument on Tuesday. The consent decree, he's just wrong. He's flat out 100% four square wrong is what Sterling said. This consent decree literally, all it did, all we did We'll send out an official election bulletin telling people, hey, follow our rules and how we already do signature match. It's an update, basically. He argued that the only substantive change in a policy, a policy subject to the discretion of the Secretary of State's office, was how people should be given notice if their ballot was rejected. It was changed to give them notice within 24 hours if that ballot was rejected within 11 days of the election. So this was just another aspect of them trying to convince people that Georgia was rigged and it somehow was pushed against Donald Trump with the consent decree stuff. That's what they started with Brad, with not Brad Ravensburg, with Brian Kemp at in this particular meeting back and forth. So he got frustrated and he's like, this is what I can and can't do. I'm the governor, so watch. All, all the people that are out here saying all these things, where were they over the last decade when I was fighting Stacey Abrams and Fair Fight and New Third Sector Development? Where were they when I was getting criticized in the national media when I was Secretary of State for keeping our voter rolls secure and removing people by, that hadn't participated in two general election cycles after we had noticed them? Where were they when I sued the Obama Justice Department to make sure that we have citizenship check when you register to vote in Georgia? Where were they when I fought and defended our voter ID law that we have in place now twice in court? Where were they when the Obama Justice Department would work with Stacey Abrams to continually sue us? As you saw that lady said, what have you done for us lately? That was in 2020. Now, he did list all these things that he said, I've been a great Republican. I've been a good conservative. I've been standing up for our voter restrictive voting laws for a while now. I've been pushing back on any folks that are outside of our, who we deem will vote for us, keeping them from voting. What do you guys want from me? I've been a good Republican, which I guess he gave his credentials there for make sure he stifles the vote. These guys have created uh, Frankenstein. They've created a monster that's coming back to bite them now. It's just ridiculous that that these other people that are still claiming fraud from the 2020 election are still holding on to it. I mean, they, by the way, you got to give it up to them for their tenacity. I don't know about you, <laughs> but two years later, I would have been like, look, man, I got other things to do. I got to drop the kids off at school. I'm gonna take up a new hobby. I might get a Peloton. I don't know. These guys are still going at it. They're showing up at the Brian Kemp, uh, uh, um, whatever that was. It looked like a kind of a sad little uh, speech he was giving at a hotel, like a tiny little like Ramada Inn or something. But whatever it is, it's all sad. It's 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 
almost I almost feel sad that they have to deal with the crazy because I don't know how you deal with the crazy. If they can't deal with the crazy, who's gonna deal with the crazy? At what point will those people wake up and go, you know what? This has all been one big scam. By the way, just look at the source of where this information originally came from. Donald J. Trump, the biggest scam artist in American history. He's the P.T. Barnum of politics, which is a little redundant because a lot of politicians are circus wranglers. But he is amazing. He's lied his way through his whole life. So it, I just wonder if one of those people wakes up one morning and goes, "Oh my God, I got scammed!" Like, is that going to happen? I don't know, Jr. I don't know. A lot of them have, <laughs> but then they don't say it because who wants to really admit to that? And also, the way to make sure you don't admit to it is to continue to do it. But like, well, you know, I can't admit it, so let me just give him some more money. I don't know the thought process, but because the, the one thing we can't do as Americans is admit when we're wrong. That's just across the board. We're not very really good at that. Uh, we've been taught that since uh, birth. 